This week's episode will be a little unusual because the topic does not directly relate to Rails. Here I'll be taking a look at Meteor, which is a JavaScript framework for building rich client-side applications. Why is this on Railscast, you may wonder? Well, I think as web developers, it's very important that we stay up to date with innovative technologies. And there's a lot that Rails can learn from Meteor, and I'll talk more about that at the end of this episode. Well, let's get started. Here I will be building this raffling application where one can add new entries and draw random winners. Now this is the same app that I built in previous episodes where I used Backbone.js and Rails, so this will serve as a nice example comparison. First, I'm going to install Meteor by running this curl command. After that's done, it will provide me with a Meteor command which I can use to create a new application. I'll call it Raffler. And I'll cd into that directory and then start it up by calling the Meteor command by itself. And now we can visit localhost port 3000 to check out the generated Meteor application, which is just a simple hello world example with a button. And when we click on it, it's going to uh, log a message to the console. And you can see that in the JavaScript console here, it says you press the button whenever you click this button. Now let's take a look at the source code that was generated for this hello world example. A Meteor application can be very simple, just made up of three files, a CSS, HTML, and JavaScript file. Uh, the CSS file is nothing special, just where your style sheets go. Uh, the HTML file is more interesting though. This is made up of a head tag, a body tag, and any number of template tags. So the first thing you'll notice is that this isn't a complete HTML document. There's no surrounding HTML tag here, and there's also no tags including the CSS and JavaScript files. Uh, Meteor will add those automatically for you. Also, this is using the handlebars template language to insert content in dynamically. For example, this expression right here will tell it to look for a template called hello and insert it right in here. So here's that hello template. And this expression right here will uh, use the greeting attribute defined in JavaScript and output that right here. And then below this, we just have that button that we click through the browser. So that makes up the full HTML document. Let's take a look at the JavaScript. Now what's interesting here is that this same JavaScript file will be executed on both the server side and the client side through the browser. So you can use an is client call or an is server call to execute code on one or the other. Now on the client side, we're doing a couple of things to the hello template that we defined in the HTML. So one thing we're doing is setting the greeting attribute to a function which returns this string. So back in the HTML, that's what this greeting attribute will output, the result of that function call. And then we're also setting an event here, which is a click event on the input element. So any CSS selector can go uh, after the space here. And when that is clicked, it will trigger this function, which just outputs this console message. So that's how this hello world example works. But instead of doing any of this here, I want to make the raffling application. So let's get started. Now I prefer to work in CoffeeScript. And if we check out the Meteor list command, we can see that Meteor actually provides a package for CoffeeScript. So we can call Meteor add and then pass in CoffeeScript to add CoffeeScript ability into this application. All we have to do is rename the raffler.js file to raffler.coffee, and then we can use it in there. All right, the first thing I'll do is go into the CSS file and paste in the code to do the styling. Nothing really special is going on here. Next, I'll go into my HTML file, and I'll adjust this title a little bit and rename this initial template here just to call it a raffle, because I'll display all the raffle details here, and the headline will say raffler. Now one thing I want displayed below here is a list of the raffle entries. So I'll need a list with an ID of entries. And then inside of here, I need to loop through each of the entries dynamically and display them. Now in handlebars, you can do that with an each call, assuming there's some kind of loopable entries attribute. And I'll just end it down below. And that means for each of the en these entries, I can display a list and just output the entries name inside of it. Now, one more thing I forgot to do here is add a div tag inside of the body with the ID of container just to get the uh, styling to look proper. So this HTML template is pretty much ready for now. I just need to define this entries attribute inside of the coffee script. First in here, I need to check if we are on the client side. And if we are, then I want to fetch the template, which is the template.raffle call and set that entries attribute. For now, I'll just set it to an array with an object with a name saying, uh, hello world as a name. Now when I visit my Meteor application, I get that raffle page with that hello world entry. 
Now I want my entries to be persistent and backed by a database so we can change them dynamically. Now the way you make a persistent collection in Meteor is to call new meteor.collection and then give it a name such as entries. And I'm going to assign this to an object called entries. And this means I can use this anywhere in my application such as inside of here, entries.find is a method I can call on a collection to fetch all of the records. Now I'm going to place this call inside of a function so that it only gets triggered if and when we actually call entries through that template. So a Meteor collection is backed by MongoDB on the server side, but we can interact with it directly from the client side as well. Now notice I'm defining entries outside of the isClient call because entries collection can be usable on both the server side and the client side. Now's a good time to check out the Meteor documentation. If you point your browser to docs.meteor.com, you can find a nice reference of various parts of Meteor. Uh, you can check out various docs on, for example, collections here. And you can see how collections work and how they're instantiated and various functions that you can trigger on them, such as find, which is what we use to fetch the records in the collection. All right, back to our application. The entries list is currently empty because there are no entries in the database, but we can add them directly from the client side. Let me show you here in the console. All we have to do is call entries.insert, which is a collection function, and pass in some attributes such as a name, and I'll set it to Bob, and then that will insert that entry immediately. So this is quite amazing because the view will automatically update when the data changes. We don't have to add callback hooks and re-render the view ourselves. Uh, let me just add another record here just for fun. See, instant, quite amazing. Next, what I need to do is add some kind of field at the top here for inserting entries through the interface. Now going back to the HTML template, I'm going to paste in the content for this form because it's quite simple. All it is is a form tag with the ID of new entry and a text field with the ID of new entry name and a submit button called add. So back in the coffee script, I need to add an event handler for that raffle template. So that's raffle.events and set this to listen to the submit event on the new entry form. And this will be set to a function which takes an event argument. First, I'm going to call event.preventDefault because I don't want it to actually follow through and submit the form. And then I need to call entries.insert to add a new record uh, with the name of whatever the user typed in, which is going to be the new entry name uh, value. And then after creating that record, I'll just set this text field to an empty string. Now the Meteor server will automatically detect file changes and update the browser accordingly. So I didn't even have to reload this page here to see this uh, input dialog. So let me try typing something in and hitting return and it inserts a record properly. So now that we can add entries, we need a draw winner button down below that when clicked, it marks a random entry as the winner. So in the HTML template below the entries list, I'm going to add a button tag in here with an ID of draw and have it say draw winner. Then inside of the coffee script, I can listen to that click event on the draw button. And when that happens, I want to select a random winner. Now you saw before I can grab all the entries with entries.find, and this actually returns a cursor object, which I can call fetch on to convert it to an array of multiple entries. Now to grab a random entry, I'm going to use the underscore JS shuffle function to shuffle the array and then just fetch the first one like this. Now, if a winner was found, then we want to mark it as so, and we can call entries.update to update the database. Um, only want to update that specific record, which we can do so by passing in the underscore ID attribute of the winner. And then we want to set certain attributes on this, which is setting the winner attribute to true for the specific record. Now, this dollar sign set option looks a little bit strange. So where does that come from? Well, this option is actually passed directly into MongoDB. And if you check out the updating section of the documentation, you can see that the uh, set option is documented here where it just sets that given field to that value. Now you can also use MongoDB operators when querying records through Meteor. For example, if we wanted to fetch all the records which are not a winner, you can use the not equal operator. I'm going to do that here so that we don't fetch an entry that's already been marked as a winner. So in this entry's find call, I can say the winner is not equal to true. So this way, entries can't be marked as a winner twice. Now I still need to update the HTML to show if a given entry is a winner. So inside of where I'm listing out each entry name, I'm also going to check if the entry is a winner. 
And then if so, I will uh, add a span with a class of winner and just say winner and then in this if tag like that. Now going back to my app, there's my draw winner button waiting for me, no need to reload. Click it and then it marks an entry as a winner. Click it again, another entry. Now it's currently easy to lose track of which one was the most recent winner, so I would like to highlight that one in red. Now I could just do this through jQuery, but I prefer it to be persistent, so I'm going to update and store this information in the database. So when I mark a winner, I'm going to set the recent attribute to true as well. But this means I need to remove and set any other previous recent attributes to false. So I'm going to add another update clause here, looking for all recent attributes that are set to true, and set the recent attribute to false for these. And just in case there are multiple records, I need to pass in this multi-option and set that to true. So now only the current winner entry should be marked as recent. So now we just have to modify our HTML template to highlight the most recent winner. Before I do that though, I'm going to move this off into a separate template so that each entry has its own template. And I'm going to call it entry, and I'll make a new template here with the name of entry. And then I'll paste the content into here and clean it up a little bit. Now I want to add a custom class to the span tag if the winner is a recent winner, so that way we can highlight it. Now I'm going to do this by making a custom attribute for this template, I'll call it a winner class. So back in my coffee script, I can add that attribute to the entry template called winner class, and I'll set this to a function call, which is going to check if this.recent, uh, so this here is the current scope of the template, so it has access to all of the template's attributes, in this case the recent attribute which is on the entry model, and if it is, then it's going to return highlight as the class, so that way we can highlight it, otherwise it's just going to return an empty string. So let's try this out. I'm going to add another entry here, and then draw a winner, and it highlights the most recent winner in red, clicking draw winner again, highlights the most recent winner, and unhighlights that one. Now I have yet to show you one of the coolest features of Meteor, and that is all changes are automatically pushed to all clients. For example, I have multiple browser windows open to demonstrate this, and if I click draw a winner on one, it automatically selects that winner on the other browser to mimic it. And if I try adding a new record here, and it automatically adds it in the other browser. This is really cool, and Meteor does it all automatically for you. You don't have to worry about it. Another great feature is ease of deployment. Meteor has some servers set up which you are free to deploy to. Just run Meteor Deploy and then pass in a domain name, such as railscastraffler.meteor.com, and it will deploy it out so anyone can see it. And then when I visit that address, I should see my Meteor application and it should work. Add new records, draw a winner, and it works exactly like I expect it to. Now one concern you might have with Meteor is its security. For example, anyone could just come into this application and open up their console, call entries.remove, and then just remove everything, and bam, all of our entries are now gone. Now Meteor will probably handle security better in future version releases, but in the meantime, check out this Security with Meteor blog post, which gives you several workaround solutions for various security issues, including how to handle cases where you don't want the client to perform database actions directly. You could just use this code there, and then you can add custom methods on your server, which the client can then call to control exactly what interactions the client has with the server. You can read this full post for more details. I'll link to it in the show notes for this episode. Another concern is the simplicity of the project structure. Having a single CoffeeScript file works great in this small example, but what if you have thousands of lines of code? Well, you can actually split up as many CoffeeScript files as you want, and they will all automatically be joined together, same for the CSS and HTML. You can also add client and server directories to your project to better control where the code is executed and to protect your JavaScript from being shown to the client. I recommend you check out the examples provided by Meteor to see the different directory structure on how to deal with larger applications. All in all, Meteor is shaping up to be an excellent solution for rich client-side apps. At its current release, I think it works best for prototypes and smaller applications, but I look forward to watching it mature. One thing that entices me about Meteor is that it reminds me a lot of Rails, in particular the concept of convention over configuration. When this is applied well, you can do a lot with just a little bit of code, and it makes for great demos. 
If you take a look back at the copy script we ended up writing here, it is quite simple and less than 20 lines of code. On the other hand, when I did the same application with Backbone.js and Rails, it took about 100 lines of code and over 40 minutes to cover it. Part of the reason for this, I believe, is that Rails' conventions are not as applicable to rich client-side apps. Rails was extracted out of Basecamp from the beginning, and I think it shows that it best fits that kind of application. I do think Rails can evolve to improve the experience with different styles of apps, but in the meantime, I say use the best tool for the job and don't be afraid of learning new technologies. Now, does this mean I will be abandoning Rails? Not at all. I rarely work on rich client-side applications, so for me, Rails is the best tool for the job. Well, that's it for this episode on using Meteor to build this raffling application. So my challenge for you this week is go try something new, whether it be Meteor or just some other new technology. Thanks for watching this episode. Next week, I'll be back to regular topics on Rails.